Hi everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today I am saving seeds. It might seem a little early by some people's standards to be saving seeds, but I'm actually saving a couple of different kinds. The first and most important thing I'm doing right now is saving dill seeds. We grow quite a bit of dill in our yard. I've let it dry thoroughly. Now, if you've been watching any of my other videos lately, you'll notice I have this paper towel. We call this the dill department. <laughs> it lives in the kitchen on the uh, peninsula top. So it's out of the way, but you can see it. and You have easy access to it. And when I harvest dill from the garden, I simply plop it on here. We actually had quite a bit of problems with aphids this year in the garden. But obviously I didn't want to spray the dill heads because it was the dill that had the aphids. Which was weird. I've never, I've absolutely never seen that here before. That's a new one. <laughs> but it is 2020, so that's normal. So I decided I didn't want to spray the dill because I was going to save the seeds. And we use them in dill pickles and other things. And also I use the dill fresh for cooking before it's dried. So I just left it be. And what I found was as the heads dried, any aphids that had been on them left. <laughs> because they're interested in luscious, moist things and as the dill began to dry off they just plain left so there's no aphids at all left on here now all I'm going to do with this is I have, I have a plain piece of paper down here because it's hard to see little brown seeds on a brown table <laughs> but all I'm going to do is I'm going to break off the individual little groups by just sort of rolling them with my fingers here. Now I've just about used up all of the dill that I had saved from last year. I did a big batch of dill pickles the other day and I am really low on dill. All I do when I'm using when I'm saving dill and I'm planning to save it for a long time is I make sure it's really dry. And that's why my little paper towel approach works really well. Find some place where nothing's going to bump into it. I could have put it in a dryer or something like that, you know, one of the food dryers or something. I really didn't want to do that because just from rolling this with my fingers, I can feel the, uh, I mean, I can smell the, the dill, which means the volatile oils are being slightly disturbed. If I were to dry herbs in my food dryer, I would be risking losing some of the potency, some of the yummy flavors that you want to have in your, in your dill seeds. I understand that if you're drying, you know, leaves and stuff like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We are in a dry enough climate, living in northern Arizona, that even when I dry dill because there's, I mean, if you, if you know anything about dill, it's so tiny, it's the size of a human hair. Um, if I, grow, if I uh, grow and dry dill leaves, I'm just, I just leave them out, same way as I did these seeds, and give me 24 hours, and they'll be pretty darn dry. The big trick is we're always making sure this stuff is completely dry before you put it away, and I can testify to the fact that if I were to grab a match right now, this would go up in a giant poof. It is super dry, and that's exactly the way I want it. And once I've got all the little guys off at the end of the, off the ends of these, all I'm going to do is collect them together and stick them in a jar. You could put them in whatever makes you happy and whatever you could have around the place. Now, what I do is I save old uh, spice jars. Because I can't grow everything that I like for spices. 
you can choose. I don't usually worry about trying to get every little teeny piece of stick out of the dill seeds because that's sort of part of it. But I do, if I have bigger pieces, I will kind of like omit them when I'm putting away the seeds. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to toss all these seeds in here and they're perfectly fine to use. I've had them last when I had a really good harvest a couple of years really without any um, loss of potency that was noticeable at least. Just like I bought it from the store except I know what was sprayed on it and what wasn't <laughs> which in this case was nothing was sprayed on it. So super easy. That's one of the things that people don't think about sometimes when they think about collecting seeds. Most people would be thinking about vegetable seeds. Well, I do collect seeds for vegetables, but not that many to be honest. These are chive seeds. Our chives, a bunch of them have um, already gone to seed and all I did was collect the little flowers at the top. They're just balls of fluffiness. <laughs> quite lovely actually when they're fresh and now these are kind of messy when I look at these like the dill you're pretty much using everything there with these you wind up with a lot of fluff left behind I just stashed all this because it's bone dry right now and I wanted to keep it that way the actual seeds are small and black and there's a lot of miscellaneous fluff in here besides the small and black Sometimes I sort that out while I'm putting away the seeds. Other times I wait until later. Sometimes I really don't do it until it's time to actually plant them. A lot of it depends on how much time I have at the time. I use an assortment of things to store them in. These are old prescription bottles. I save them. They're not completely airtight, but they come pretty close, especially if you put them upside down. If you have the ones like this that have the uh, childproof locks on them, which are a pain, uh, if you put them the other way around, it gives a much better seal than this way. And besides, I have trouble opening the childproof locks on some of these things. Sometimes this one's easy, but every once in a while you hit one that's stubborn. So, yeah, these make good storage. You can get what they call coin envelopes at a, an awful supply store. These come in packages of like 300, unfortunately. <laughs> so if you're looking for just one or two, share them with friends. <laughs> um, little Ziplocs that are used for craft supplies are good. For larger quantities, I sometimes will use little sandwich bag Ziplocs or other plastic containers that are reusable. The... Um, Plastic containers that grated cheese come in. Those get used over and over and over here, both in my studio and for saving seeds. They're handy. They keep the seeds dry, clean, together. No bugs get in them. You get the picture. So, think about it. Are there seeds you could sa save? The other day I was looking at my um, Swiss chard. One of the branches had elongated, it was obviously going to go to flower, and I decided I would save some Swiss chard seeds. Now, let me clean this mess up because I don't want to miss, mix dill and Swiss chard. <laughs> there we go. That's the advantage to having a little piece of paper on top of the background. You can see everything really easily. Okay, these are Swiss chard seeds. Unfortunately, there was an even bigger branch, and we had a huge windstorm the other day, and all the seeds were stripped off that. So, <laughs> there's a big pile of seeds over there for Swiss chard. You're actually seeing me do something I never do today. I'm sitting down at the table. <laughs> this is my seed area right now. I've been sorting seeds and um, recipes and planting fall gardens and everything else. These work the same way as harvesting dill. I just made sure they were super dry 
and then I they fall off the stem really easily and I'm just going to put these into a little container. I won't save the scrungy little crummy looking ones. I'll just save the big healthy looking ones. So there are some seeds that are coming ready right now. I do not normally save tomato seeds. For some plants like tomatoes, most people recommend that you let this, the fruit get really ripe, actually let it ferment. You can most people have smelled a tomato that's kind of gone by. When it gets that sort of almost alcoholic smell to it, you're letting it ferment. And then when it's completely broken down so that you can get the tomato seeds out of the squishiness that's around in the gel, then you simply rinse them off and dry them and let them be dry before you put them away. Make sure whatever seeds you are harvesting, they are dry before you put them away. If you put a wet seed into a plastic container, I almost guarantee it will mold. And that's not a good thing because then you might as well just throw it away. And you don't want to have spent all that time and effort for nothing. Don't hesitate to save seeds, but be sure you know what you're saving. If you want quality plants, you have to know your source for seeds. When I'm talking about planting things in the garden, you'll hear me say, if I've had good luck or bad luck with a particular thing, you'll hear me say, the seeds come from a quality source. Not everybody who's selling seeds out there is a quality source. I have heard quite a few complaints about against a couple of popular seed suppliers because people got the wrong seeds. You get a seed, it looks like a brassica, something in the cabbage family. You plant it, and it turns out not to be anything like what you were hoping it was going to be. That's a problem. Especially if you were, thought you were growing something small and it's actually something big. You really may not have room for it in your garden. And most of us, when we plant something, we have a plan. So, if you have a problem with a seed supplier, get back to them right away. Let them know there was an issue. And if they don't satisfy your needs, then I think you need to pass that word on to your friends. Because it's frustrating when you get crappy seeds. Once in a while, something just goes wrong. Even with the best seed suppliers in the world, something just goes wrong. And it may not have been anything they did. It doesn't happen very often, but could it happen? Yeah, unfortunately it could. So, stuff can happen if you don't take good care of your seeds. I know people who do things like store them on the windowsill. That's a really bad idea. It's one thing to dry something out on a surface, but I would never leave seeds in the sun where they could get cooked by the sun. You really want to consider how you're storing your seeds. They should be cool and dry and out of the sun. If you save seeds, be sure that they have not been cross-pollinated. There are certain species, things like uh, cucumbers, squash, that cross-pollinate super easy. And if you've ever been in a squash plot where you've got like zucchinis and yellow squash and stuff like that, you see those big bumbly bees and honey bees going from flower to flower to flower. They don't sit there and go, oh, oh, wait, no, I was just a zucchini. I can't possibly go to a yellow squash now. And they will cross-pollinate. If it doesn't matter to you, if you've got a purebred zucchini or a purebred yellow squash, that's fine. But be aware that if you're saving seeds, stuff has to be planted quite a distance away to be certain. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You too can save seeds. You know, things like um, dill, super easy. Maybe when your plant's getting a little on the rough side, Give it a try. Let me know. Have you ever done it? I haven't done the celery seed, but I do dill all the time. And I do flower seeds all the time. Uh, chives, I have marigolds, bunches of different things. Some things work better than others, but give it a try. You won't know until you try it. So until next time, bye.